this is a platform center in the of it. Now, when you look at safety, our InterChannel Health products can come under safety. The other one, uh, those are the various categories. I'm talking about uh, the drug, it's not free supply. See, you should say that, and if you have the time, you should come and visit us in our Ambatur uh, laboratory, where we actually set up yeah. uh, trial facilities for shrimp uh, in our uh, laboratory. So, any time, and I welcome any one of you, if you have the time, drop in at our Ambatur office. We've got a fabulous facility uh, for aquaculture shrimp um, uh, trials. Interestingly, also, we have now tied up with universities and organizations, starting actually with uh, the Tamil Nadu Fisheries University the Kasastad University in Thailand, University of Ghent, and the University in Ecuador, also to do uh, trials along with us in the area of uh, shrimp and fish. So very much on our radar, uh, Nazir, but thank you for that question. Uh, very, very important part of our business. Yeah. Uh, so, Prithishan, what I will say, you know, please don't depend on these government uh, agencies. <laughs> you, like you have in your, in your uh, movement for, uh, plant, you know, like a farm, R&D funds for poultry, birds, for broilers. Right. Similar kind of, you know, you come in has its own R&D. I think you can really do good to the industry and to your company. Yeah. So, you're absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah, you're absolutely correct. Now, I, I'll just explain to you why the universities are also used. And you know our customers, right? Yeah. So, we use our own R&D farms and laboratories, even the one in Gumudi Pundi, as well as the one we have in Ambatur. A lot of that is done to do internal screening and development of products. When you take data to a customer, a customer likes to see an independent third party uh, <laughs> data, data set. They think that if it comes out of a Kemen farm or a Kemen lab, they don't necessarily always give it 100% credibility. Not only Kemen, any company lab they think, oh, you know, this is a. So if you give it to a third party, and all these are the top of the line universities very well respected by our customers. So we do in our own labs, reconfirm it and validate it in third party laboratories. And that's the reason we tie up with universities. Thank you. A China research facility will have a fish research lab. Also. Also. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Chris, uh, yes. I was telling about Kevin Biologics. Yes. Well, and, and So the Kemen Biologics is the vaccine business which we have initiated uh, middle of last year. So here this currently this company is for Biologics is focused on uh, purse vaccine for swine. Of course not much swine in India but <laughs> rest of the world has a significant swine population and purse is one of the most significant uh, disease uh, that the swine herds are exposed to. So the technology is very unique. We took a stake in a company in the U.S. which developed the technology and we have exclusive uh, sales marketing around the world with, with this technology. So we set up a company to take this vaccine to the market. Our long-term aim is to bring in poultry vaccines as well. We also have an investment in uh, Egypt in a company which is the second largest vaccine company in Egypt. We are primarily focused in the Middle East market. So we have started small. And uh, our next five to ten years, very clearly, this business is going to significantly contribute to our long-term growth in the animal nutrition and health. So if you look at the one of the significant challenges our farmers face is disease, and the first line of defense is vaccination. So this is our commitment to this industry from a long-term perspective. I think so that's an important important overall strategic aim is, is that we've said that the immune system of the animal, what we can do, what can we do to optimize the immune system? And so, uh, of course, there's two types of immunity, innate immunity, which is the that which is we have all the time, and then acquired immunity, which comes from a vaccine. So our product, Alita, which is uh, we made reference to that we will be expanding that product, which is uh, a stimulant for innate immunity. We're going to be expanding that in India. And then now to be within the acquired immunity area, 
that's the vaccine and chem and biologics. So really working at both sides of the immune response within the animal. Are you working for vaccines for the shrimp and fish also? Yeah. Yes. At this time, we are, again, the, the way we are approaching this is we, we couldn't do everything ourselves. So we are collaborating with partners outside who are specifically focused on shrimp and fish vaccine. In case of poultry, we are again working with uh, researchers who are developing that area and we would <coughs> primarily commercialize and own the technology, own the technology and commercialize. Yeah, I, maybe I could I could talk a little bit about our general acquisition strategy at Kemen. Uh, we are, we say that of our growth, our objective that is that 80% of our growth comes uh, organically. In other words, from our own research and development areas. 20% of our growth should come from acquisitions. And so uh, we look really, I would say, on a worldwide basis, we look for possibilities of where we can acquire a company where perhaps the technology has been proven maybe in a very limited geography and that we can take that uh, on a worldwide basis. A very good example is uh, this acquisition which we made uh, basically about two years ago of a company called Algal Scientifics uh, out of uh, Michigan in the United States. Uh, they were manufacturing a particular beta 1-3 glucan that was uh, from algae that was very good at stimulation of the immune system. Uh, they had sold just a little uh, within the United States and had, uh, and had not been able to sell anymore. Uh, we've acquired the company and now uh, have uh, started and introduced the product on a worldwide basis. Uh, it, and uh, as I said, we are now in the process of expanding the, the, expanding the uh, fermentation of this algae to here in India, and uh, that will be the next, uh, next phase. But it's a, good, it's a good indication of the types of acquisitions we like to make. Cell chemistry is new and yet not new at all yeah. <laughs> for us. Uh, let me give you an example, and, and hopefully you saw the demonstration of blue genes uh, and what it is. The, one of the principal chemicals that is utilized in blue genes is enzymes, and specifically cellulase. Uh, we've had actually uh, worked with cellulase for over 25 years, uh, utilizing cellulase in animal feeds to increase the digestibility. If you utilize cellulase and you don't let the digestion go fully, you will end up in the effects that you saw in uh, the blue genes. Uh, if you let it go fully, then you come up with the holes that you see in blue genes. Uh, but it is the same chemistry, basically, that we utilize in animal feeds. So this is very similar to what Kemen does, is we like to become experts in particular molecules and then get interested in all of the businesses that are using those molecules. So it was actually uh, a very natural leap for us to go into the textile auxiliary business uh, because that, uh, that business is uh, utilizing one of our core technologies. Um, the other core technology that that business <coughs> utilizes is surfactants. Uh, we've been very, very large in surfactant uh, chemistry, whether that uh, has been in the animal feed in, uh, business, both biological surfactants and surfactants used in feed milling. It turns out that some of those same surfactants are utilized in textile auxiliaries as well to be able to uh, have various effects on, on textiles. So again, 
uh, taking chemistry at a molecular level and then synergizing it across various businesses is certainly one of Kemen's long-term strategic aims. Therapeutics, biologics, and the feed additive business. Currently, Kemen parts fits only in the feed additive business. Okay, uh, biologics is a new entrance, uh, new segment for us. We just started off last year. Uh, we have no intention at this time of getting into therapeutics because we are encouraging our customers to, and the world over, the customers are moving away from use of antibiotics to non-use of antibiotics. So we see the the uh, long-term growth coming in the area of biologics and continued use of nutritional uh, ingredients and health and safety ingredients. That comes under feed additives. That comes under feed additives. Yes. Yes, feed additives in a what field is that because we would like to uh, mention you know, in our uh, uh, reporting you know, when the publication comes in feed additives segment in the world what is the uh, what is the uh, Position of chemical globally, like in a ranking. So if we if we if we uh, look at the overall market, about if you look at therapeutics, feed additives, and biologics, yeah. it's 40 40 percent each in therapeutics and feed additives. This is the market size, and 20 percent is the biologics, 20 to 25 percent. Now, if you again specifically go into feed additives, the largest categories are vitamins and amino acids. We don't participate. We are not basic manufacturers of vitamins. Sir amino acids. We do work on amino acids for uh, the dairy area, which is encapsulation. So that's a very different business segment. Then if you look at within the feed additives, there are specific categories where we participate in. For example, antimicrobials. We would be number one or number two in the world market. Okay, uh, Because you, there are so many players, to if, even if you have a 7 to 8 percent market share, it becomes very substantial. Antimicrobials for feed safety. Biosurfactant, we are number one in the world. This, that we basically are pioneers in that category. Then, if you look at uh, intestinal health program, and there's a basket of programs that you look at from a intestinal health space. I think depending again on which segment we look at, we <coughs> would range be between the top three players. You would be in that category. Yeah. And then, if you look at uh, enzyme, enzyme, we have become basic now in ma manufacturing enzyme. I'm not sure how many of you read the announcement early this uh, month that we took a stake in a company fermentation facility manufacture of enzyme in China, a significant minority stake in, in the company. So that makes us basic in manufacturing enzyme. We have, have our own enzyme strains which we will produce. We also produce our own probiotics as well, which goes as part of the intestinal health. So in the intestinal health space, we are in the top three globally when you look at the total portfolio that we cover. Of our cattle we are dependent on feed items in India. So, how do you see your market in India, especially in cattle feed? Is it challenging to expand your wings in this space? In India, <coughs> <laughs> cattle feed, uh, to be frank, whatever we are producing is not to the extent what the amount of feed what we are supposed to produce. Uh, it's it's been really challenging uh, for the feed. We, it, it's not going the way we thought actually the feed uh, production in a spe specifically in the cattle feed many of the uh, our customers they use uh, some of the raw materials like oil cakes and uh, uh, mostly they use on their own especially with the backyard uh, uh, cattle people having maybe two to five cows uh, and they are basically utilizing on their own what are the raw material what they have on their own so we still the industry is growing i would say around 7 to 8% which is much much higher compared to the world average if you take uh, but uh, for the amount of uh, population what we have at least we should have now producing close to 70 million metric ton of cattle feed but today we are around uh, 10 to 10 million metric ton of feed is what we are producing as a compound feed if you ask me so the growth is good in terms of if you take world average we are growing at 78% 
but we are long way to go in that. Work on probiotics or you also intend to work on prebiotics? That is one of the plans, but not right at this moment. Yeah. Right now, I think that when we've looked at the prebiotics that really have high efficacy, uh, they need to be included in feed at uh, 0.5 to 1 percent of the total yeah. feed. And every time we do the economics, remember we said that you're going to be able to earn one rupee, two rupees for every rupee you give us. Uh, we can't find a, a, a return on investment for the uh, prebiotics right now. Not economical, not economical today. So, so Nazi, going back to your prior question earlier, so the, the other category which is very significant, you would have seen it while walking to the factories, our product application division. Uh, we operate in a se several liquid programs to our customers. In that category, which we would like to refer to as a liquid smart program, which is feed safety, feed efficiency, and forage treatment, and dairy forage becomes a very critical one. In that category, we are number one around the world for for many, many years. Yeah. Well, it yeah. gave us a very good feeling when we visited your plant and a very, yeah. uh, very clear it is, you know, every way, you know, uh, it was taken care of well. And uh, one last uh, uh, point, you know, question I have for <laughs> the You know, I, I think uh, I, I look at it as sort of as a world, world opportunity, and regardless of uh, what nationality and so on, it's a world opportunity in nutrition. And uh, India remains uh, very very high on the list of, of places where I see that uh, Kemen can make a real difference. And uh, and so there's no question that uh, that it has uh, that it has a very special place in my heart. And uh, and then. We've been extremely fortunate to have some very highly qualified Indian managers, and uh, we recognize great people. And so, yes, they uh, uh, they're at the table. <laughs> Thank you all for your valuable time. I just want to. Yes. Apart from that, you know, do you have any plans uh, to help the farmers uh, to get the better uh, the promotion of uh, both chicken and egg? You know, there's no question that uh, egg, certainly egg uh, production as well as boiler consumption continues to be a real area of focus for us. Uh, in my mind, as I see it, each of our products, we, we make an implicit promise to the farmers with our products, and that is if you invest one rupee on a product from, from Kemen, we guarantee a return of two rupees. And in many cases, that one rupee investment can yield five to seven rupees. And so with that sort of investment, we believe that the continued growth of our products allows the farming industry to continue to grow on a, on a wide-scale basis, making protein uh, more affordable uh, for anybody who wishes to be able to purchase it. And I think that remains one of our areas. When we see particular um, opportunities like uh, Egg Day that is uh, celebrated here in India, uh, we're going to be 
highly supportive of those uh, because we do see that the promotion of these of these you know almost perfect protein animal proteins will is one of the best ways to guarantee adequate nutrition uh, for the population. Maybe Mr. Rush has some comments. Yes, yes, Chris. Uh, in fact, uh, one thing is we are uh, participating like promotion of uh, through the egg day and others. Now, apart from that, we are also to produce a quality protein. We uh, actively participate with the, our customers, especially in uh, uh, importing knowledge and exchange of knowledge from the customers through uh, various programs like uh, we have a uh, uh, lot of uh, training and audit programs which we continues to do with our customers and in turn they can produce a quality food to the consumers. Uh, so that is somewhere Kevin is actively <coughs> participating specifically through our uh, uh, customer laboratory service as well as the technical service and the engineering service all which works to improve the quality and safety of the food feed and in turn produce a quality food. So this is an area which actually participates. KP might have some comments especially on the aquaculture area because I see this is a real growing area within the country. Yeah, I think we could have a, an exclusive uh, president for aquaculture. <laughs> you can also some, throw some light on it. I was actually going to wait for some silence and then tell you about aqua. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you Chris. Yes. <laughs> Um, it's quite interesting actually, uh, Kevin has been in aqua uh, now, particularly in India for almost 10 years, uh, but has always been part of our animal nutrition and health business. And more recently, about three years ago, in Asia Pacific, out of Singapore, we started focusing on aqua as well. Uh, last year, Kevin made a very serious decision and identified aqua as one of our largest growth opportunities over the next 25 years. If you look at world statistics on aqua or on meat consumption generally, you'll find all other meats, be it chicken, uh, uh, pork, beef, mutton, are all almost plateauing, in some markets even dipping. Aqua is the only animal protein that's actually growing at 3% annually, global numbers I'm talking about. So there's this huge, huge opportunity in, uh, in aquaculture. And uh, we took this decision uh, and in Kemen we realized that having it under a different business unit doesn't give it the focus and the energy that is required to be able to really, really su uh, support our customers. So a decision was taken to create a new business unit. And this business unit demerged to started last year and effective 1st January of this year, we have created this new business unit which is a global business unit operating out of South Asia. Asia Pacific, the largest market China, EMEA which is Europe, Middle East and North Africa and uh, Latin America, primarily Ecuador. So a little while ago there was a question about exports from this uh, plant in Gumbadi Pundi. Interestingly, um, one of the things we're looking at is exporting aqua products out of India, particularly into South America and Europe uh, and for Asia Pacific because we've got some really good research that has developed new products. So what this new focus and the new business unit is going to do is to create specific products for the aquaculture industry. And this will uh, benefit the farmers as well as the feed manufacturers who make aqua feed and grow shrimp and fish in different markets in the world. happy to see uh, the facilities you have established uh, and particularly you know uh, two R&D farms you have poultry mm -hmm. which is a very nice thing you know which I have not seen with uh, uh, many of
Rush spent way too much money. I don't know if he can tell you how exactly how much. Yeah, <laughs> it's almost close to 50 crores what we invested <laughs> in the current, uh, the, the new facility what we have come up. say that within, within the Kemen business, uh, the agricultural or animal feed area remains about 50 I don't hear too many complaints coming back to the United States, so, but maybe Suraj has a different view. <laughs> He's a big business. He's a doing business in India. What are they? Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, it's, it's uh, really good in India in the sense, uh, the way we do our business is not only uh, the sales, but the sales and service model, that's what we follow. And uh, the sales team has always been supported by uh, some three, four other service teams. Like we have a customer laboratory team, we have an engineering team, we have a, a technical team in the field. And apart from that, even sometimes it occurred, our research and development team also jumps in. Mm -hmm. And when we talk uh, about the science to the customer and you can demonstrate the benefits to the customer, it becomes easy. Once the customer sees the ROI, I don't think that uh, any issue is there in terms of doing business. So let me elaborate on that response and I'll look at it from a slightly different perspective. Uh, you're probably your question alluded to that as well. Since about 20 years we've operated in the country, uh, we haven't faced any significant hurdle in starting business and doing business from a regulatory perspective or government. Um, <coughs> One of the reasons could be is that our industry is not really um, that well regulated as well as it is not in the uh, sites of the government decision making bodies. We still uh, fly under the uh, radar in most of the cases. But having said that, uh, we have had the necessary support from the government, uh, local industry body and uh, uh, we have not faced any major challenges so far. And I'm President and CEO of Kemen Industries. Today we were very fortunate to be able to announce and uh, see, today uh, we were very fortunate to be able to inaugurate a new manufacturing facility in Gumdi Pumdi outside of Chennai. This facility is our third uh, in large investment within India to be able to continue to manufacture ingredients that go into animal feeds, human foods, as well as pet foods and nutraceuticals. Kemen remains highly committed to India and its uh, nutrition, and we bear, are able, we feel, to be able to do this through our customers who have shown us the great loyalty through the past 20 years. We look forward to many more years here in India and many more expansions. Thank you. <laughs> Is that enough? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good.